uh, Martha Karua, and it's great to see you, Martha. As I mentioned, it's been a very long time. We'll talk more about you and your plans in a short while. But first, focusing on matters of corruption, we're asking, do you think we will see prosecutions? Do you personally think we'll see any? I think we have a responsibility as citizens to press for prosecutions. The president has made a fast step in the right direction, asking all those mentioned in scandals to step aside. And if they do fail to step aside, because some have, not everybody has, the ones who are actual civil servants, he has the powers to suspend them. They should stand suspended, because step as stepping aside preempts being suspended. And after suspension mm -hmm. or stepping aside, it's not the end of the matter. We want thorough investigations and prosecutions for those who are culpable. Do you think the commission as it stands right now is capable of carrying these out? It can if it wanted, but I must say that the commission is tainted by Rangos and by their own doing because two commissioners mm. did write a petition against the chair. Even though they have purported to withdraw, I'm of the view that once they write, they cannot withdraw. And purporting to withdraw puts into question their own credibility. In itself, they have raised an issue that existed. Yes. Did yes. the issue disappear? Vanish into thin air. Right. So the EACC currently has its own issues that it's yeah. dealing with. Mm. How do we then, instead of wallowing in self-pity and yeah. whining about the problems, Martha, what are the solutions? How do we whip up this institution and, and strengthen it to the place where it has the credibility, the integrity, and the capacity? I thought the president sort of like said over to parliament about the process of looking at uh, what else the EACC. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, they've been asked to investigate cases and report within 60 days. So long as they remain in office, they have mandate to investigate and all eyes are on them. The cases may be too many for just the EACC to do in 60 days. But they can co-opt the criminal investigations department officers. To Nothing stops the them mm -hmm. from hiring private mm -hmm. people to come and help them. They've been asked to do something. If they want to salvage their dwindling credibility, this is the time. Let them give Kenyans what is expected. This is the time for the yeah. EACC to yes, act. Yes. If you were to advise the governors right now, they've yeah. taken a stand on this yeah. issue, uh, what would you say to them? Elected leaders are slightly different in that the constitution, the laws do not spell out what would happen. Mm -hmm. And the precedent in the past is that even when charged, they continue to hold office. It's only when jailed for more than six months would they lose office. If as Kenyans we want to change this, nothing stops us from enacting a law to that effect. But on a personal note, nobody stops any of the governors from saying, I have nothing to fear. Mm -hmm. I will step aside and facilitate investigations. Mm. But I am a bit saddened by the fact that the whole list of 175 people does contain well-merited corruption allegations and it does contain some that appear unfounded right. so you leave it to each person to determine uh, very yeah. quickly as things stand right now do you think governors do have a license to loot nobody has a license to loot chapter 6 applies to all Kenyans and therefore if any governor has misused public funds they ought to be investigated and prosecuted. The same with any cabinet secretary. Whether it is the office of the president, whether it is any other place, no Kenyan, not the president, not his deputy, no Kenyan, is above chapter 6 of the constitution. So no license to do just because you hold elected office and have yeah. certain protections, you must still obviously be accountable uh, to the people that you serve. 
Well, we're back to speaking with Martha, and now we want to focus, I think, on security. The Baragoy situation, repeatedly, it seems, uh, you know, we have ultimatums being issued. Is it time we take a hard hand on this? And we know there are a lot of human rights issues that can be raised when the government or security agencies take a hard hand. But w what do you suggest would be a way forward? I think as Kenyans, we are tired of losing lives all the time. And Baragoy, you are to remember that we lost 42 police officers. By now, we should have a comprehensive plan of how to secure that area and other areas where there is turbulence, neighboring Caperno mm. and uh, all such areas. And I think it is possible to take a very tough stance while respecting human rights. Where are the loopholes? Where I think it's gaps? just in the manner in which those who are in charge of security are going about the business. The issues we have in these areas are not just about insecurity. It's also about underdevelopment. Mm -hmm. This is a new dispensation. We have the equalization fund. What is so difficult about opening up such areas with infrastructure? We should be busy building roads so that even when you are tracking down criminals, it's easy. We should be busy taking electricity, water, all those things. Right. And once you do that, the way of life of those who think that they can only prosper by uh, going for the uh, livestock of others, they'll find other ways. There are lots of people coming from those areas, from those communities, who are working and leading different lives because they have had the opportunity. It's time we opened up opportunity in the rest of the country so that people can adopt to new ways of life. You know, I was going to ask a question relating again to the situation now, but in northern and northeastern Kenya, and I yeah. think the same the thing same applies. Let me ask you this. You know Kaiseri very well. Yes. Do you trust that he can do the job? I think he can, but he will require, and he requires, the support of the government that has appointed him. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't get full support or half-hearted support, he cannot deliver. No one person can deliver without the support of the government. Thank you for uh, your views. More with Martha Karua. She's staying in studio with us. You can share your questions for her as well at Julie Geshuru or at Citizen TV Kenya. Right now we're going to take a look at what you've been searching on the internet over the past week. It's net search time. We bring you the top 10 Google search trends between March 22nd and March 29th, 2015. And at number 10... It is Uhuru Kenyatta. Now, President Kenyatta, of course, this past week asked uh, five cabinet secretaries to step aside over graft allegations against them contained in a confidential EACC report that he tabled in Parliament. The affected cabinet secretaries, Felix Koske, Davis Chircher, Michael Kamau, Kazungu Kambi and Charity Gilu, of course, they have stepped aside. They are among other civil servants who've been told to step aside. That story ignited a lot of attention online. At number nine it's jeremy clarkson and this story has been running for weeks now the form the popular former host of top gear uh, the bbc show was finally officially fired by the station after he got into a fracas with a producer over claims that his dinner was not served on time actually he said his dinner was not hot uh, the bbc director general tony hall said a line has been crossed and um, there cannot be one rule uh, for some people and another rule for others. At number eight, it's Ray Mysterio. Now he's a Mexican-American professional wrestler. This week there were rumors that he's considering retirement following the death of his longtime friend and wrestling co-worker, Pero Aguayo. And uh, after many people believe he was responsible for the death, Mysterio is said to have delivered the flying kick to the head and neck area of his colleague that reportedly snapped his spinal cord, eventually leading to death by cardiac arrest at number seven it's Senyanka Senyaka legendary Kwaito musician Senyaka uh, Seyanka died this week his family confirmed that he had been in a coma for the past week some of his popular hits include Chisa Mpama Romeo Wang Colota and Mapona Pona Satane at number six 
It's Joyce Lay, the Taita Taveta County Women Representative who has accused a fellow MP of insulting her after she allegedly declined his sexual advances at a hotel in Japan. The story has been in the news the whole week with women parliamentarians supporting her on how they are portrayed by the media when the media report matters of this kind. I'm going to ask my director to bear with me. I want to come back to Martha on this particular issue. Thank you so much, Carol. Um, the issue of representation of women, and particularly women in political leadership uh, in the media, I have to come to you, Martha. Do you think there is a fair representation, or do you think Joyce is right? There is a problem. Absolutely not. There is no fair representation. Mm -hmm. Women are portrayed differently. If you're strong, you're labeled aggressive. A man is called an upcoming strong leader. Right. They tend to focus on dressing, focus on issues, non-issues, rather than issues. And uh, even when there's been um, aggression against women, right. what is portrayed is as, as though the woman is on trial. Or she asked, she asked for it. What is, the woman is, did right. to attract that. Right. So the portrayal of women is not, even in politics, it's not... What do you fair. think that stems from? Is this cultural? I think we are all socialized to view women with a different, from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. So it's something we need to get over consciously. We need, and it, it will happen to both male and female reporters. And it happens to us also that sometimes, yesterday I was introducing a friend of mine who is a CEO of a bank. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I told my colleagues who were ladies, over there, that's the CEO of X Bank, mm -hmm. they actually thought I was referring to, to the, the man, man next to her. <laughs> so it's our socialization. Right. It's something we right. have to do deliberately. It, it message, because we have this chance to speak to people who are teaching, in the, me the media is a key influencer. And for those who are teaching for all our colleges, please keep this in mind in your journalism classes. I believe, as mm. someone in media, that it is a problem. Before we move on, another question I have for you. The rate of sexual violence against children yeah. is horrifying the rate of sexual violence against women you know again but but you know you've got to sit back and ask yourself when you see children being raped and murdered being raped and put into fear of their lives uh, you know they cannot report it what's what's going on in, in our society it's an issue of enforcement the laws are there right but so long as we don't enforce we are actually reinforcing impunity we've had an alleged rape case against an MP the whole week. Mm -hmm. The standard procedure is once a doctor proves that there was aggression and like with this woman there are signs of struggle, the suspect ought to have been arraigned even In as court. they wait mm -hmm. for others. Mm -hmm. But what is happening is that there are a category of people who are able to wiggle their way out of such cases. What does it do? It lays the vulnerable in society open to abuse so we are telling the law enforcement agencies pull up your socks no double standards prosecute those who are guilty of crimes of a sexual nature mm -hmm. or of a violent nature against women and children and i'm disappointed that this issue of violence against women was not addressed in the state of nation address very important that we have the laws in place they yeah. must be implemented we know what the parliament that you were in went yeah. through to pass the sexual offenses act why are we not ensuring that these laws are enforced well it's raburua santis sana um we're taking a break now but first martha a, a tweet has come in for you uh from cs davis and he says julie gishore it's always a pleasure to see honorable karua on set she's brilliant he says uh, and he asks, what's her view on the recent lsk agm issue um, and the leadership I think most unfortunate for a meeting of uh, learned colleagues mm -hmm. of the society I belong to right. professional society I belong to to de de degenerate people may differ but uh, we should first and foremost differ with respect and if there are issues they should listen to one another and solve them but then we got to remember lawyers like everybody else are human beings mm. so the real issue is how we pick the pieces from there and i believe that the leadership will take steps to heal the rift 
to consult more on the proposed arbitration center and to also see where the differences are coming in. But lawyers must also not avail themselves for hire by anyone to disrupt their own society. Wow, and you know the irony yeah. is this is all about an arbitration yeah. center. That, that yeah. perhaps is the, is the biggest irony. We're taking a break. More on Sunday Live. Uh, stay with us. Don't go away. Now, um, we get back to our interview with Martha Karua. Um, you'll be leaving us in a short while. I have some questions that have come in, though, from the audience. Thank you so much. So many people have sent questions in. So the first one I'll ask is from Tien Madhu. He sent it by uh, SMS, and he says, I want to ask Martha Karua if she would agree to work with President Uhuru's government if given a job to do so. <laughs> First and foremost, I'm not looking for a job. And secondly, we've got to get Kenyans away from this idea mm. that everybody who doesn't succeed in elections has to find a job in government. A position somewhere. Come on, let us remember that less than 5% of Kenyans are working with government. Everybody else is doing their thing. I'm with the majority of Kenyans, but I'm a loyal citizen. I will raise my voice when there is need to. I will support where I need to support, but talking about a job is out of the question. So the, the most asked question this evening will be no big surprise. It is, will the name Martha Karua be on the ballot come 2017? So tell us, what are your plans? What next for you and what next for the party? For me, I said I'm not done yet. So I'm still around and I'll seek an opportunity to serve Kenya as I'm entitled to as a citizen, and leave it to the voters who are also entitled to make their own decisions. NAC Kenya, the party I lead, is rebuilding itself. Right now, we are identifying champions countrywide to rebuild the party mm -hmm. in readiness for the next general elections. So yes, we are around. We're around, says yes. Martha Kuro. Thank you so much for making time to be in studio with us. I've no doubt we'll be seeing you again. Yes. Um, and as Martha has said, she'll be commenting on the issues that matter. And we as Kenyans need to stop thinking that if you lose an election, that you should be given some kind mm -hmm. of position or job. Uh, yes, uh, as some kind of reward or, or to keep you... Or compensation. Or compensation. Like or something. <laughs> right. Yes. Thank you for joining us, Martha. Mm -hmm. We're going through our top, uh, our final five on NetSearch, and I will come back and ask Martha her views on these as well. So at number five, um, let's have that up. The young ones will know this one. Um, the young urbanites. It's Zayn Malik uh, from One Direction, which is a very popular pop boy band based in London, uh, popular globally though, comprised of several different people. Now he was one of the members of this band and after five years he has decided to leave the group saying he wanted to lead a normal life of a teenager. At number four, it's the Crick, well, it's coming up there, you have it, it's the Cricket World Cup 2015 indeed. And uh, this is the 11th Cricket World Cup jointly hosted by Australia and New Zealand from 14th February to 29th March 2015. The final match of the tournament takes place today at the Melbourne Cricket Ground between co-hosts New Zealand and Australia. Oh, I'm told Australia has won by seven wickets. Thank you for that update. <laughs> and number three, that's Mike Okini. Thank you, Mike. And number three, the English Premier League. Of course, it had to feature. And it's Man U versus Liverpool and Chelsea versus Hull City matches uh, that were most popular. Uh, they were searched by football fans over the week. Related search terms include Liverpool, Liverpool versus Manchester, Liverpool uh, and Manchester United versus Liverpool. Liverpool, yes, this, the same matches over and over again. So I won't take you through that list. Many, many different searches on matches. At number two, La Liga. And La Liga matches that were searched this week are Barcelona versus Real Madrid. Football fans also searched El Clasico, a name given to any match between the two fierce rivals. At number one... It's Emmy Notha. She was a renowned mathematician who made important contributions to theoretical physics and abstract algebra in spite of the rampant sexism of the early 20th century. Google celebrated her 133rd birthday. It would have been if she was still with us today with a doodle and that drew traffic. Very quickly, NetSearch is fascinating to see what Kenyans 
are searching. I mean, a lot of that is international. Very interesting to see cricket there, considering our cricket team gave up, it seems, or has not been performing for a long time. What are your thoughts on the search? It just shows that we've become a global village, mm. that things happening elsewhere are of interest to Kenyans. Those who are interested in sports will follow sports irrespective of where it's happening. Right. Those who are interested in science or in other things. And uh, I too do follow <laughs> this, do wait for Sunday live to see. To watch an ad search. Yes, yes, How yes, fantastic. Yes, That's great yes. news. Well, mm. thank you, Martha. It's been mm. a pleasure. We're taking a break. Come back for Michael Kinney with Sports. Don't go away. <laughs>